Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany, a retired librarian turned homeschool mom. And in this video we're going to talk about an unknown book mostly. It's actually in republication. It was originally published in 1957. It's been republished in 2017. So this is a book that I hadn't heard of until I was looking up the film it was based the uh, film that was based on it. So this is the secret of the Ron Moore scurry, probably mispronouncing this. Um, the film rendition, which I have, and I'll review that later, is called The Secret of the Roan Inish. The stories are pretty much identical. There's a little bit more added to the film, but the basic core of the story remains the same, except for, you know, the changing of the name. So the story tells of a little girl by the name of Fiona McConville. Um, she's a child who was born and spent her early years on islands, uh, basically the western islands in Scotland. So they were, her family were generations of primarily fisher, fisher people who lived off these harsh lands in little cottages. And after her mother's death, her father was anxious to get off the islands. He was bored and he wanted to be kind of done. Um, and I don't know if she has older siblings, it's not mentioned, but she has a baby brother by the name of Jamie. And he was still very much like maybe one or two years old um, at the time as her mother had passed. And when they left the island, the younger people kind of pushed the older ones, particularly her grandparents, to leave the island because they wanted to go to the mainland where there was better opportunity and a wider range of life. So when they were leaving, they were in a hurry. Most of the kids were put in the boat, but they didn't have enough room for her little brother, Jamie. So they left him on the, in his um, cradle, which is a boat-like cradle that had been passed down from um, generations, and he floated away. Essentially, seals, it's kind of a legendary kind of story. There's a little bit of fantasy in here. The seals take him away. So she knows this. She's, this is, and we, that's kind of the background of the story. The story starts with Fiona having become ill. They, she's been living on the mainland for a couple of years, and she's just, she's become very pale. She's just, she's not really all that healthy. So she sent back to the coast to stay with her grandparents. Her father's still kind of fishing, but he's not on the islands anymore. And she comes there. She's very curious about her little brother because nobody will ever talk about him. And she goes to stay with her grandparents and interacts with uh, a cousin by the name of, I think it's Rory, um, who's a little bit older. I think he's about maybe 16. She's about seven. I remember the story. Um, She's about seven years old. So she was a little bit younger when this, when she was drawn away from the island, when she was maybe about four. So she doesn't remember, remember her brother very much. So she gets there and her grandparents are very much kind of, her grandfather's still kind of living the old ways. He's, he's out there fishing. And she learns about the legends of their family where, she, now she's a redhead. Most of her families are redhead, but periodically there are what they call dark ones that is dark hair. And the legend has it that back when they were living, their families were living on the island generations ago, um, a member of this tribe came home one day with a woman on his boat. And he said she was from these craggly rocks. And she was very mysterious. She was very quiet. And she had wild, wild black hair and dark, mysterious eyes. And it's, she was obsessed with the sea. When she got pregnant with her first child, she instructed him to build a cradle that was more like a boat. It was carved out of wood from ships that had sailed on the sea. And essentially it became more like a boat. It was a it would rock on the waves and float. And that cradle would pass down from generation to generation. And most of the children in the generations would be these redheads. But occasionally you would get dark ones. And these ones were specifically 
drawn it to the sea. Most of the time they were fishermen and they were happy to live off the land and live near the sea. And Jamie was one of those dark ones. And so it's theorized that the seals took him away when the families were leaving the island. They took him away because they saw he belonged to them. Now a lot of this is based on old Irish and Celtic legends about the Selkie. Now what the Selkie were, were um, they were shapeshifters. Essentially there were seals that could transform into humans by shedding their skin. So that is what it is believed that this woman was, that she was a Selkie and that in legends he either fell in love, they either fell in love or he stole her skin. And so it kind of imprisoned her a little bit with him. And so throughout the story, she's back with her grandparents and she's very, she wants to go back to the islands. So they go out there, her, her grandfather and her cousin Rory, and they're gonna go out, set some lobster pots. And so they leave her on the island and she explores a little bit. And she comes to her old cottage and she sees almost like a tea set set up with shells and things and it's warm in there, which she finds really interesting. And then she thinks she sees her little brother, Jamie. And she specifically talks to her cousin Rory about it and he believes her. And then they, a short time later, the landlord, because her grandparents are renting, um, basically says, my son needs the house you're living in and you're gonna have to move out at the end of the month. So her grandparents, and there's no real place left on this kind of coastal area of this, I think it's a much larger island because you see her coming there on, on a boat. And her grandfather is very depressed because he, he, he's being drawn away from the sea and the sea is all he knows. So Fiona and Rory decide they're going to clean up the cottages back on the island and they can convince their grandparents to go back and live. Rory's old enough, he's, like I've said, he's around 16, so he's a big strong boy He's a fisherman, he's always dreamed of going back to the island. So this is just speeding things up. So him and Fiona go back, they clean up the cottages, they fix the thatch roofs, um, they move all the furniture that had been left behind into one cottage. I think it's Fiona's cottage, the one that she grew up in. And um, kind of clean things up, repaint things. He, he, her cousin fixes kind of the windows and the thatch. She's in the house cleaning, polishing everything, dusting everything up, making it home-like so they can convince our grandmother to come back. And specifically, she wants, she sees her, she thinks that they'll get her brother back from the seals if the, they see family um, coming back. In fact, her grandfather makes a point that she, they see this seal watching them and they call him the captain. And they think basically because they were this is a Selkie and that this specific family is a member of his tribe and he wants them back on the island. Um, so they eventually get everything cleaned up and they tell their grandparents and their grandfather believes them. And then they mention there's this big storm coming and they worry about baby Jamie. So they go back, grandmother is com completely convinced. They go back to the island and they cook up some soup because this woman that in the generation was known to go to a specific area for types of seaweed and old shellfish and types of shellfish and cook up this kind of thin hearty soup. And they're there and the storm is coming in and then they see Jamie in his little boat. He's maybe about four years old um, and the seals force him in they essentially give him back. They see that there's family living there again and they push Jamie, particularly the captain, kind of enforce him. It's like, no, you need to go home. And her grandmother talks to him and he runs to her and she wraps him up and they bring him in the house and they talk to him. And I think he speaks a little bit, but otherwise he's relatively quiet because he's not been around humans and he's been surviving with seals. Again, there's a little bit of fantasy here. And it kind of, they give him soup and they curl up and they're home, essentially. And they're going to remain there on the islands. And you basically, the captain seal there 
like Jamie is safe now. And Fiona talks about how he must have been abandoned and was protected by the seals and then came back and his family is gone. And he doesn't know where they are and he's cold and he's lonely. And he take, the seals take care of him and now his family is home. And he's home and he can be with his sister and with his grandparents again. And that's the end of the story. It's, let's see, I'm looking at Amazon here. Um, it's, how many pages is it? It's only 96 pages. So this is not a long book. It's recommended for um, like third to seventh grade. You could probably read it aloud. Again, it's a short little, it's a very short little story. It's very cute. It's kind of methodical. It's very much touched on the old Irish legends and, or not the Irish, the Scottish. Um, the Scottish legends of the oceans and the sea creatures and living that life which I, I enjoy. It's an enjoyable book. I would definitely read it to my children. It touches on that old mythology of the Selkies and of the families living by the ocean and in that world where it was a harsh land, and but they loved it. And the grandparents moving home because the sea is their life. So that's really it for this video. Um, again, this book is not very long. I would highly recommend it reading aloud, even to young kids. Um, if you're not afraid it's going to scare them too much about a little boy being whisked off by seals and then brought back. Um, and it's very cute. I mean, it's very, it has a feel to it of almost like what you would read when you were getting the Scottish Highlands and near the coastal lands. And it's very beautifully written. It's very fun to read of this little girl wanting to connect with her ancestry and being with her grandparents. It's also a book where it almost implies that basically coming back to nature because she was sick in the city. She wasn't well because it wasn't a good place for her to be. And so she, like her cousin and her grandparents, longed to be home. And her cousin does mention that his siblings who were in school um, intend to come back to the island once they're done with school. So he actually might be about 18 because I know he's done with school and he's working. He's work, working with grandfather fishing. And so he tells his family, it's like, yeah, we're going back to the island. And they, they're not surprised because that's what he intended to do. He, this was not a secret. He always intended to go back and fix up the cottages and go home. And so in his siblings, it very much implies that the family is going to, at least some of the younger generations, miss the world and it was their parents who were pushing to go back going to the city and the younger generations want to come back and live by the land and live in the sea so if i remember correctly this thing was originally published around it was republished around like uh 2017 um but i remember correctly because the author um died in like 92 so Let's see, I can't remember. Where is this telling me? Um, it came out in like the 50s, I think. Because again, yeah. Let's see. Let's see, where else is it gonna tell me where this, when this book was written? I read it somewhere, but here we go. Um, yeah, it was published sometime. If I can find it, there it is. Um, nope, there's not even a Wikipedia page on the book itself. The Wikipedia page for the film um, tells me, based on, yeah, it was published in 1957. So you can kind of get that sense almost if, as if it's written by a younger generation, um, almost the hippie generations, like their parents moved away from the land and they want to come back to it. It has kind of that feel to it, but it's a good book. It's a good children's book. I would recommend children reading it of pretty much any way, age. I enjoyed it. The main character is about seven years old. You get most of everything from her point of view. Um, there's not much depth to this. It's very simple um, of this really short little story. Again, it's under a hundred pages, so it's an easy read. Um, but again, it, it's enjoyable. And it's simple. It's something you can read aloud to your kids. It's if you're looking at kind of environmentalism or the legends of the Selkie, 
and just kind of kids who enjoy that kind of getting back to nature and connecting with the earth and particularly the ocean and seals so because again selkie so that's really it there's not much else to say about this book so i'm going to end the review here i will cover the secret of the roan inish um that's how i found out about this book and i realized it was been reprinted back in 2017 so i figured you know what i'm going to read the book and i'm going to re re review the book because as of right now it's still in publication you can actually get it both in kindle and in hardback so if you like this review uh, check out um come friday i will have the posting of the secret of the roan inish which is the film adaptation of this book that came out in like 92 i think um check out the rest of my stuff i do a lot of children's book reviews some various film reviews um secular ik non-religious homeschooling stuff here and there some kids travel stuff and a whole bunch of other stuff so be sure to like and subscribe and check out the rest of my channel thank you